Oh, hello everyone. Let's start again. Today I am looking to inside Elasticsearch.yml, which is the most important configuration file, as I noticed said before, right? So we are going to go step by step and understand what each configuration means and how you can implement it in, implement it in your use case because the defaults are, you know, well, just defaults. So let me just cat that file and we are going to create a one for our own. So, you know, this has a lot of comments and all that and we want to make it a bit more flexible and that's what you're going to do. I can directly just, okay, let me just go to the directory way better so you know what i'm doing it's obviously a yml file so for right now we are just going to name it anything else of course giving an extension yml so you will have some help in indexing so let's begin with what does each have to say a note skip that cluster some things are just straightforward and we are just going to use them that way we want to keep our cluster name as Mr. Terminal Cluster. All right. And next is node name. So what you need to understand from this node name is, and from this file, essentially, you are naming the node itself and not the other nodes. So each node has its own configuration. That's something you is obvious, but still needs to be highlighted so example node uh, but for the short ones huh now this is something that might not make sense at the start so we'll add custom attributes to the node attributes means properties everybody knows that but what is the use case the use case of this is if you have a lot of nodes and let's say you want to know the health of those nodes but not all nodes few nodes and you want to say i just want to know the node whose size is about 100 these are again just random values i'm giving so you are creating a you can understand you're creating a key size by yourself this could be anything i could give it well mm, something something and you're giving it a size uh, number 100 so when you query in that case which we will complete in the later parts so when you do that you can just say i need a node whose attribute size is about 100 equal to 100 less than about an hour greater than 50 and this will come up and show up in that query so you do by default add these and like in here by default they just added a, an attribute rack this is a random attribute they have given so of course and if you want to make it a bit more clean this is the approach you can use my rack is an r1 and the size is 100 well, who cares? Let it be thousand. So when I filter, it will help me create these. I filter these nodes very easily and query them. So in a big system, in a product system, this is a very important thing to configure. Paths. Our paths are two. As you can see, one is data path and one is log path. Again, to for a clean configuration, this is what we're going to do. Now, path.data, this is where Elasticsearch keeps its data. So you need to understand what kind of data this is referring to. So when you have logs in your, let's say, Cloud or XYZ place, that's not the data this is referring to. This is the data Elasticsearch has got, the process data. And that is documents. That's where Elasticsearch is storing. Or by default, you will, it will go into library of wherever you're running. But in practically, that's highly unlikely. That's what you're going to do. 
right? It's going to be somewhere in the disk, in a cloud disk or multiple disk. So that's important to care. So this is a care about. This is how we are going to configure it. Let's keep the default one for just use case purposes. And let's say you have created a disk and I missed that. It will is mounted probably, right? So it could be any XYZ directory and then XYZ directory. This is how you're going to do. So it's going to store in all of this. I mean, need some backups in production cases. There, This is a normal scenario. That's how we are going to give, tell Elasticsearch where to keep your data, that the documents that you have. Or it could be reverse if it's only process data. You can just tell us that's where the data is. This is what I want to play with when I put it. All right. And similarly, we're going to tell it for the log. So you're going to add that and that too again. By default, the path is very log elastic search. And I want to keep it somewhere else too. That's how I'm going to configure it. Logs these aren't the logs that you if you are using elk stack these are not the logs that your cloud instance has or your resource has these are the logs of Elasticsearch itself so whatever it is doing however it is getting created that's what it is that's what i love, love about we i am it tells you what's wrong with it and that's the path thing memory is something related to java so i'm not going to really touch it and it's fine you can you're okay with defaults within most cases when it is related with java heap size because elasticsearch works on java on found when its foundation so we are not going to touch that and in usual cases you won't have to we will cover this later in extras but it's fine Network is very important. In practical use cases, network is where you are going to connect your nodes and the cluster and everything is going to be inside network. By default, you have this 192.168.0.1. This is just the local IP address of the node itself. Just to point out, this is not the IP address of the host machine. But the node so it's fine if you give it just the local host that works perfectly fine it's a home address and that's what we're going to do for now but in case if you want your elastic search to know that there are more networks that needs you know configurations and there are more nodes in this place this is what you you are just going to enter them all my local host is there and you can use host names as well in fact ip6 addresses this is the syntax for the ip6 address addresses so we are not going to use that right now but you should know how to configure that and another network you could be on a public ip address so that IPv address goes here too. This is where my nodes are. You're telling this network, this network, this network. And ports, by default, again, you don't have to worry about ports. By default, it starts, if you don't mention the port, it's perfectly fine. Like I mentioned here, but I didn't mention you. It will look at 9200 and well keep looking ahead not behind by default if if your port is at if you allocated the port to be at 9250 so it will allocate by default as well so you don't have to mention the port just make sure the configuration is greater than 9200 that's where it will start so right now we're just keeping it 9200 discovery this is where your cluster knows what nodes to pick as master and this is something i haven't covered yet but 
cluster has nodes, right? And it had those nodes to have to be managed. And one of the nodes from among all the nodes is considered a master node that we use the term publishes to all other nodes that this is what the cluster state data looks like. This is what cluster is all about. So they don't have a different picture of the cluster in the sense that one node shouldn't be saying, hey, I know that only 200 nodes are exist and existing in this cluster and some other node is thinking, if you want to use that term, that 10 nodes are in cluster. So that should not happen. So there's always one master node that's keeping updated and keeping connected all these nodes together. There's a peer to peer connection with all of these nodes. It knows what's going with individual nodes and that's how a cluster is managed. In an ideal condition, there is only one master nodes. And, and if you have two, you have some configuration problem. So this is what this, the purpose of discovery seed host configuration is. So you are telling Elasticsearch where to find these nodes that are capable of being master nodes. So that depends on your configuration, your system, what your infrastructure looks like to, and tell it which are my master nodes. And once you do that, it will look, it will consider, conduct a watch it, it calls master election. And it will pick one, one of these nodes as masters. So when you are using this, you need to tell them you can use this format as well. And you can tell this is my host. And this is my host. Conduct an election between them and see which is better for becoming a mass node. And this is what it's all about. And you need these hosts are obviously, you can tell this is where my host is located at. But the def as mentioned, the default list of hosts is, of course, the home address, local host address in loopback addresses, if you want to call it, in IPv4 and IPv6. Once done, once you have told them what hosts are like, this is very important again, cluster initial, cluster dot initial, master nodes. Look at the default configuration, node one and node two. If you don't mention that, of course, this is all commented out. It's in defaults already existing. But if you don't mention that, and if somehow the configuration is missing, the cluster just wants that. It has to know how many initial master nodes are. You have to configure that. By default, they have just, for example, given node. These are node names again that conduct these nodes as conduct the election between these nodes as if you want to specify um, what was my name Zip node some other node that these are master nodes capable by default it will just look at the single node that i'm running on so this is not an ideal condition or a practical condition so you don't have to worry about it in test time, testing time, but in production, this is going to happen. You have to mention which nodes are the best. If you got confused between these, these are node names, actual node names that are in the entire cluster that are bounds for being a master and controlling all the nodes that are in the cluster. And these are the host or IP addresses, the network at in which all of the nodes are, not just the master nodes, all of the nodes are. So if you have one bunch of nodes in AWS, bunch of nodes in Google Cloud, so you have to mention the network. And that is something more in depth of network related, but those who know networking, you know what I'm talking about. 
this has to know which network it is in and that's what you're saying this that's where discovering where all the nodes and from that nodes is selecting the master nodes don't worry about the various i think yeah that covers our understanding of most fundamental configuration of Elasticsearch. if you know these and you know how to use them just like I explained and if things are not crystal clear yet it's fine because I am giving you breadcrumbs so it's if you understood some of the things because you don't have the entire infrastructure in front of you right now and you're just starting then it's fine if you have experience you know what I was talking about when I said about networking and network hosts and paths you would understand more if you are aware of the entire infrastructure if not, just stick with me and we will deal with infrastructure as we cover Kibana and Logstash because they all work together to completely in a sync with the infrastructure. So we will create a demo infrastructure and then we will work on it. Now let's save that. Before quitting, I would just need to highlight this as well. This is where the defaults are. So in, when you are in production, these come very, very handy. Right. So it has the defaults of Elasticsearch, especially directories. ETC defaults Elasticsearch. That's the file, not a directory, obviously. So it, you can configure where its home is. Most cases, I know defaults are just fine, but in practical cases you do have to play around with these settings so you should know where to change them where the home is where the path for configuration is where pid directory is process ids so you can change them here and continue working with elastic search as you do these are fundamentals of elastic search configuration and if this video gets enough views i will continue with kibana and I am starting a Docker series soon, so in parallel, I'll work on that too. See you in the next video.